Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries and some of the more unusual discoveries in regards to the actual shape of the Milky Way galaxy, and more importantly, what created these unusual features that we're going to be discussing. Because unlike the typical representation of the Milky Way, which basically makes it look like a disc-shaped galaxy with a relatively flat plane, all of the modern discoveries suggest otherwise. In the last few years, the discoveries suggest that not only is our galaxy warped and seems to have an unusual shape for one reason or another, it also seems to contain several major ripples across it, formed in a very similar way to how ripples form on a typical liquid. In this case, because of some kind of a massive interaction with something else that used to exist here billions of years ago. But, as you're about to discover from the recent study, we've learned that it seems to still exist here, and the scientists finally know exactly what caused it and how all of this works. But I guess first, a little bit of history. Some of the initial discoveries from back in 2002, from an extremely long-running survey known as SDSS, Sloan Digital Sky Survey, started to uncover a lot of interesting features not just about the entire universe, but also about the Milky Way galaxy as well and specifically about certain regions in the galaxy that seem to possess way more density than other regions, representing what the scientists refer to as overdensities. Back then, the scientists discovered several different clumps with different density of stars at some of the outermost edges of the galaxy itself. And the first such structure discovered back in 2002 today is referred to as the Monoceros Ring, something that seems to contain approximately 100 million solar masses in total, and something that seems to be about 200,000 light years long. It's essentially a kind of a clumpy structure, or some kind of an overdensity, that forms a ring on the outskirts of the galaxy. But this was just the beginning. In 2015, in this study, the scientists identified several other structures, eventually discovering at least four of these ripples, at different distances away from the center of the galaxy. For example, there's the Tri-Andromeda ring, the south middle structure, and the north near structure as well. And although this was only seen in one part of the galaxy, today it's assumed that this is essentially a ring that seems to go around the galaxy itself. But because these are ripples, they also seem to have very similar features with some parts going up and some parts going down. And because of this, it's actually relatively difficult to see the rest of the galaxy, or to be more exact, to assess the exact size of the galaxy because of the unusual overdensities present in certain regions. And so back then, the assumption was that maybe our galaxy is much larger than we initially thought. Instead of being slightly smaller than the Andromeda, it was now assumed to be anywhere between 150 to 180,000 light years across, or very similar in size to the Andromeda galaxy. Which also implied that maybe the solar system is actually a lot closer to the center than we initially thought, approximately a halfway away from the center, as opposed to lying at two-thirds of the galaxy's radius. But despite the discovery, it was still not clear exactly what these clumps are, and more importantly, how exactly they were formed. Some scientists speculated that maybe these are remnants known as the stellar streams, so these are usually streams left by various orbiting galaxies that used to exist here, and have now been tidally disrupted by the Milky Way. Other scientists suggested that maybe these are just anomalies, and don't exist throughout the entire galaxy, yet some other scientists suggested that maybe this is due to gravitational effects from something around the Milky Way with more observations revealing even more hints, and specifically establishing that many of these formations were not really aligned with the disk of the Milky Way. Even four of these separate structures, with the closest one being about 6,000 light years away from us, were positioned either above or below the plane of the Milky Way galaxy. But intriguingly enough, the distance between them was more or less the same, approximately 6,000 light years in between major structures, as if, once again, these were ripple-like structures produced by some kind of a massive interaction, and once again implying that these were ring structures, with some other studies even potentially discovering what seems to be a vertical ripple, or I guess a ripple that's only visible in this particular perspective, not really a ripple that's visible from the top. And a lot of these earlier studies started to imply that a lot of this seems to be kind of correlated with an orbit of another galaxy known to us discovered not so long ago. And that actually includes that vertical ripple as well. I mean, this study right here kind of spoils it. Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. A galaxy whose initial influence was completely unknown to us, but in the last few years, the scientists discovered some really intriguing things about it, and it's, by the way, barely visible somewhere right there. 
including the fact that it seems to have initiated major star formation in our galaxy, maybe even creating the solar system, and by the way, thanks Sagittarius Dwarf, also more recently discovering that it seems to contain huge amounts of gamma ray emissions, possibly because of pulsars, or maybe because of mysterious dark matter, something that was initially a mysterious phenomenon inside the so-called Fermi bubbles. But as we discussed in a recent video you can find in the description, turned out to be the result of Sagittarius Dwarf as well. But more importantly, the most recent study almost definitively shows that the interaction of Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy with the Milky Way almost definitively caused the ripples of the Milky Way at those specific times when the Sagittarius Dwarf passed through the disk of our galaxy, implying that at least twice, as the Sagittarius Dwarf passed through the Milky Way, it caused all of the stars around it to mysteriously dislocate and oscillate at different speeds. Something that the scientists were able to confirm by observing the extremely accurate measurements of the motion of various stars, with the values for these stars measured by the iconic Gaia telescope. And so by using the data from Gaia, and also employing the technique the scientists refer to as galactic seismology, the scientists were able to compare the estimates for the interaction of Sagittarius Dwarf with the current motion and the current location of various stars. Here's a brief summary of what we currently believe might have happened 5.7 billion years ago, and once again 1.9 billion years ago as well, with the third passage and the final passage possibly occurring about a billion years ago. And here's maybe another way of visualizing this, by trying to compare the formation history of most stars with the known parameters for the stellar stream created by the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, so we know that it seems to have crossed the Milky Way at least three times. And this, as a result, created quite a lot of disturbances in the Milky Way, producing the ripples that seem to have appeared around the same time as well. Although according to the scientists in this paper, most of these ripples appeared during the last passage approximately a billion years ago, implying that maybe originally there were more ripples, but with time most of them seem to have dissipated and disappeared, and only some remained up until now. And the most recent ripples are probably actually much smaller than they used to be back in the days. And that's because we know that with every passage, Sagittarius Dwarf lost more and more mass, with the last passage very likely involving the galaxy that already lost most of its mass. But even a billion years ago, it was at least 20 times more massive than it currently is. Today it's believed to be at least a thousand times less massive than our own galaxy, meaning that most of the mass was stolen from it and deposited into the Milky Way, or at least left in the stellar streams that you see right here. But I guess more importantly, highlighting how extremely influential this galaxy was on the evolution of morphology, or essentially the shape, of the Milky Way itself. It seems to have affected the star formation, it might have even created our own sun, it definitely affected the formation of stars in the last billion years, and it formed these unusual ripples, which though for us are kind of invisible, are very likely visible from outside of the Milky Way. Not to mention that it also obviously contributed quite a lot of mass to the total mass of the Milky Way afterwards. But we obviously have other dwarf galaxies orbiting around the Milky Way as well. As a matter of fact, the large and the small Magellanic clouds that you see right there, at some point might actually have something similar going on as well. They might start falling into the Milky Way, produce their own stellar streams, force their own star formation as well, and disrupt the galaxy even more, producing even more ripples or potentially even other unusual features, thus allowing our galaxy to evolve even more. And then one day, we're going to have one of the major collisions in the history of the Milky Way, the collision with the Andromeda and the Triangulum Galaxies. But by then, planet Earth will have transformed dramatically, and life will probably no longer exist here. But that's of course not something we're going to be discussing in this video either. For now, an intriguing study, an intriguing discovery, and an important confirmation of the influence that certain dwarf galaxies have or had on the Milky Way, with this particular galaxy, Sagittarius Dwarf, for some reason having way more influence than a lot of other galaxies we've studied so far, and also obviously possessing a lot of other mysteries we'll be discussing in some of the future videos as well. But until then, or until new discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye. Oh, I have a Milky Way hat.